So, you're stuck in quarantine with nothing to do and decided to tip your toes into Fate. Good idea, the Fate franchise has some of the best animation, action, boys, girls, uh, um, music and dialogue the medium has to offer. The Archer class really is made up you of dodged my This city really looks like Why a city. Why does people die berserk? when they are killed? Um, it, it makes sense in context. I, I think. But now the question remains, where do I start? To newcomers the Fate franchise can be a little overwhelming, but it actually isn't as complicated as it may seem. It all started with the Fate Stay Night hentai visual novel in 2004. Just like other visual novels, Fate Stay Night has multiple routes. The Fate route, the Unlimited Blade Works route, and the Heavensville route. Fate Stay Night also has a prequel novel named Fate Zero and a sequel visual novel called Fate Hollow Ataraxia. And that's it. That's everything you need to know. As long as you've gone through these three, anything else can be consumed in whatever order you want. Easy, right? Well, um, the anime version of the Fate timeline, however, is a little bit more complicated than that. You see, Fate Zero has an anime adaptation, Unlimited Blade Works has an anime adaptation, and the Heavensfield trilogy will conclude in the near future. The problem is that the anime adaptation for the very first route of the very first game, well, um, it... It's not very good. Because of this, we have to be a little bit more creative with the watch order. The community doesn't seem to be able to find a consensus on which watch order is best. Some say that it's best to just skip the Fate route and begin with the second route in Limited Blade Works, while others argue that it's best to watch the series in release order, meaning that one would start with Fate Zero and continue with Unlimited Blade Works. Neither option is perfect, but both of them are still pretty good. After wrapping my head around the problem for some time, I feel like I've finally cracked the code, and that's why I'm so very proud to announce that I have found the absolute best way to watch the series. This might be a little controversial, but I honestly feel like it's best to start with Fate Zero. Even though it might not be the best start plot-wise, and there will be some minor spoilers, I think the fact that the animation will not get worse over time makes up for it somewhat. Not only that, but this way the fact that the last Heavensville movie isn't released yet doesn't matter either. After making your way through a 1 hour long episode 1, which probably won't make a lot of sense to you, everything after that is smooth sailing. After Fate Zero, continue by watching Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Please do yourself a favor and do not watch the 2010 movie. Don't make the same mistake I made. Afterwards you can watch the first two Heavensville movies and then wait patiently for the third to release like the rest of us. The third and last movie was set to premiere by the end of March but got delayed due to the coronavirus. When the movie does release, it should have screenings even outside of Japan, meaning that it's very likely that a theater near you might be screening it. Unless you live in Europe of course, because nothing good ever happens here. If you live in Europe, you'll have to wait another 9 months to buy the Blu-ray, giving you more than enough time to watch the other series in the franchise. You can start by watching Fate Apocrypha, but before doing so, it is very important to first take out your phone and google the definition of plot armor, because it seems like 90% of the people who have watched this show don't actually know the difference between plot armor and just plot. Continue by downloading Fate Grand Order on your phone. Play through the entire storyline without reading a single line of dialogue, because reading is for fucking nerds. Gamble away your entire life savings trying to get a single PNG of an autistic anime girl only to get jack shit and suffer from chronic sodium overdoses. Trust me, we all went through this at one point. It's all part of the process. Next, you can watch the Fate Grand Order Babylonia anime. Since you only have a vague idea of what happened because you skipped all dialogue, I'll give you a quick rundown of the Fate Grand Order storyline. So, in Fate Grand Order, instead of summoning history's biggest retards to our time, you summon yourself, the biggest retard of all, to the past. Babylonia is the seventh arc in the story, taking place just before the final showdown and just after Spider-Man kills the Green Goblin. After that you can finally start watching today's menu for the Amia family, because that's the whole reason people watch Fate in the first place. Historical figures fighting to the death? Boring. Historical figures eating food and playing volleyball? Ah, she. Next up, it is very important you go to youtube.com and watch Family Guy Funny Moments number 13 part 2. Not because it's relevant to the Fate storyline, but because it's the funniest shit I've ever seen. Ah. You can also watch Fate Khalid, which is a magical girl spin-off featuring the Fate Stay Night cast, but be aware that this show has some... questionable scenes. FBI, open up! So unless you want the FBI knocking on your door, I recommend investing in a good VPN. Which brings us to the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. Huh? What do you mean they haven't 
reached out to me yet. Do they, do they fail to see the incredible reach this channel has? Man, this is... I know what you're thinking. Ever since you started watching the Fate series, there has only been a single thing on your mind. Is Fate Stay Night really that bad? I mean, personally, I don't think it's worth your time, but if you made it this far, you might as well check it out and decide for yourself. This also gives us the opportunity to explore some of the many secret endings this route has that not a lot of people know of. The first secret ending happens when Rin and Sakura convince Shiro to pursue his dream of becoming a professional high jumper. The anime adaptation was supposed to be aired this summer, but sadly due to coronavirus concerns it has been delayed until 2021. The next ending can only be triggered if your computer recognizes that you are in possession of the Big Bang Theory achievement. This achievement can be obtained by completing the easter egg and blowing up the earth on a Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies map called Moon. Depending on your actions, this route either ends on a major cliffhanger setting the stage for Fate Extra or can be seen as a prequel to Nier Automata. Shiro also makes a quick appearance on Hell's Kitchen, but I'm not quite sure if that one is canon. Describe the dish, please. Yeah, delicious. I mean, really delicious. Gets a very favorable critique. I mean, it's like being in a Japanese grill in Kyoto. The finish line is now finally within sight. It's been a long ride full of ups and downs, but don't worry, I've saved the best for last. Carnival Phantasm is a parody spin-off including characters from multiple Type Moon series like Fates Day Night, but also lesser known titles like Tsukihime. So now you're forced to be up to date with the storyline of every single title within the Nasuverse. Don't worry, it won't take very long. So. Type Moon is a game studio Every type of an example of an See? Not that complicated at all.